I hate Kanye. People say shit like, oh, capitalism drives innovation. No, lesbians do. Making my family take the TISM test at Thanksgiving. Let me see, what's your score? Uh, 50? 83? I don't know. 50? 22! Oh! oh. <laughs> so it's definitely dad's genetics. <laughs> it's dad's genetics. True. Social relatedness. <laughs> <laughs> I am associated with my documentation. Oh. Oh, what? Who, what, hey, where, where? Sure you shit ain't like me. Yeah. Gotta catch another fight. Have a bottom make him wanna bite. I just wanna have a good night. I just wanna have a good night. Hold up. Stop telling me to dress warmer. I am freezing. But you know what? Winter is a concept, and I I look adorable. Every time you say something is your spirit animal, you have to give every Native American person you know $25. Even if you really love that actor, $25. Even if that animal, like, totally gets you, $25. Even if you're at Coachella, $25. Wait, make that one $50. Spirit animals are important and valuable to a lot of Native cultures, so if you're just gonna use it for whatever, we're gonna tax you for it. Whenever you call something a powwow, when it's really just a boring work meeting, you need to take every native person you know out to brunch. Yum, yum. If you call someone the low man on the totem pole, you've got to buy every native person you know a new pair of shoes. And if they're from a tribe that actually has totem poles, you better throw in a fun hat. If you say someone is off the reservation, you should give every native person you know their own reservation. <gasps> to a restaurant. Whew. You're buying. <laughs> If you call your friends your tribe, then you better give all the native people you know a bribe. And we ain't cheap, so I'll take all the money in your checking account, please. And if you call someone an Indian giver, then it's important that you call yourself a home giver. Because you're going to buy every native person you know a brand new house. Holy hell, I thought this one was obvious. And if you use all of these phrases, but you don't know any native people to send money to... Then just put it in an envelope and mail it to the 1970s rock band Redbone. Also, <laughs> why are the only native people you know the 1970s rock band Redbone? What's your problem? We made this. And we didn't call any of our meetings powwows. Unless there was a buffet of fried bread. <sighs> Delicious. The end. Oh, and give native people their land back. Burn my house to the ground! My family's dead! What do I do? I love when we play the game of blaming the victims of capitalism instead of blaming capitalism as a whole. I feel like this is a very common theme among miseducated people. They know some. we're supposed to be mad at something. We're supposed to be mad at somebody, but they don't know who the fuck we're supposed to be mad at. So then they start blaming, like, immigrants for taking their jobs. They start blaming, like, um, mothers for not providing enough to society. Instead of looking at the institutions that uphold these things to begin with. Maybe if the average, you know, single mother had access to higher paying jobs, maybe this wouldn't be an issue. And it's like, that's the only connection that you had to make to not post some shit like this. We need to talk about this powerful photograph. It's been going viral lately and for good reason. Taken in 1931 by Rachel Posner, this photograph is a reminder of resistance and the power of light in dark times. The family who this menorah belonged to, and in fact the menorah itself, survived the Holocaust. This is a miracle. The Posner family saw the warning signs and were able to flee Nazi Germany before it was too late. Today in the United States, anti-Semitism is at an all-time high. 
how do we identify the warning signs and when will enough be enough? I'll be honest that I have found myself thinking that I chose a bad time to convert to Judaism. I've posted just a couple TikToks about my conversion process and the amount of anti-Semitic comments I've gotten is disgusting. But when is it ever a good time to convert to Judaism? Jews have been the target of persecution for centuries. And while this is not the same as this, hateful speech can and does turn into Nazi flags. Non-Jews, it's time to speak out on behalf of your Jewish friends and neighbors. Help us to make Never Again a reality. Hi, I'm Ez, and I'm doing things you're afraid of to show that it's okay. And today, I'm doing my makeup on the train. So this was at 7 a.m. So there was a lot of morning commuters and they seemed to not really appreciate a lot of people talking. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna do a voiceover instead. And also I was a little bit nervous, not going to lie to you. I wanted to do makeup that would kind of match my hair. It was meant to be red, but it's like washed out to a pink, but I'm kind of vibing with it. We like the pink. I am sorry for the lack of doing things you're afraid of recently. I took a little break from them, but I'm back now, and I'm actually, the reason why I'm even up at 7am, which is rare for me, the reason I'm up doing my makeup on a train at 7am is because I'm going to the Isle of Man to see my family for Christmas, and I am really, really excited because they got a new cat, and they let me name it, and it's called Cheese. So, I get to meet Cheese today, and I'm really excited, but yeah, and it's all okay. Dear white people. Okay, this one is kind of different because I know I teach, like, I make videos that's like, teach you all how to be anti-racist. And I'm, like, addressing different racial things that you all have done to black and other people of color. However, I have never, ever, ever, ever acknowledged the people who has actually not done any of these things who is trying to make a change in society who is supporting people of color who are supporting black people who are actively making a change and yeah it's the bare minimum i know that i should not be thank you all for not being racist but that's not what i'm trying to do i'm thinking the people who have took time out of their day to read a book by a black author to understand the black struggle i'm thinking the white people who has went to a support group to call for change within a black community. I am talking to the white people who have went to protests regarding the Black Lives Matter movement or anything that has to do with black people and has protested and stood with us since day one. I am thinking of white people who has made videos trying to educate people that look like them so they won't be racist, knowing that they have privilege, but trying to tell their friend, their cousin, that they have privilege so we can live in an anti-racist society. I'm thinking of white educators who teach about race and racism in their classroom, despite of what their colleagues may say. I'm thinking of white people who don't use their privilege for bad, but for good. And I know that what I am saying can be deemed as the bare minimum. But I have this ideology that if we want change to come, we all need to stand together. Is it going to be perfect? No, it's not. But can we create an anti-racist society with only one group? No. I'm going to use this example. Just say you're a new person in the school or you just tried some new food for the first time. You're going to be scared on that day. You're not going to know what to expect, what you just did or nothing like that. But then there will be a person to come up to you and be like, OMG. Hi, you are so brave. Like, that's really good what you just did. That is going to motivate you to keep doing what you just did. Since you took that risk and you got complimented and somebody acknowledged you for that, you're going to want to keep doing it again and again. Same thing goes with race. If I see you actively trying to learn about the black experience, I am going to thank you. Because that shows me that you're taking the risk, despite of what everybody else says, and you're actively trying to understand and learn more. Now, that is not the bare minimum. That's being smart. Get ready with me while I tell you some of the racist shit that British people say to me. Oh, excuse me, um, but do you speak English? How do you like living in a more civilized country then, eh? Oh, nice shoes. You must be Japanese. Oh, you should have played Mulan in that live action film. So, where are you from? Oh, no, 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 no. 
Don't tell me, I'm very good with accents. Hong Kong, Japan, China? China, China, Vietnam? Well, yes, of course, I mean, Van is such a Vietnamese name, isn't it? Oh, Vanessa, really? That's interesting, how exotic. Oh, LA. Right. Well, no, that's not what I mean, of course. I mean, where are you really from? You know, where are your people from? Um, where's your family from? Your grandparents, for example. No, 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 no. Um, what I mean is, where did your family come over from? You know, like, originally? New York. Oh, oh that's not what I meant at all. Racism? Oh, no, 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 no. We don't have anything like that here. As a matter of fact, the government have commissioned a report. Are you even Chinese? Oh no, Chin Chin is just a thing we say, it's not racist. Well, I suppose the Italians were making fun of the Chinese, but... So, can you please explain to the group why that Mulan comment was racist? I'm just gonna need you to explain it to everybody. I'm just gonna need you to explain it to the entire group. Oh, you know, how she looks like you, um... Oriental. Well, we're all about diversity and inclusivity here. Can you do an Asian accent? Well, you know how Asians have high cheekbones? Coronavirus. Coronavirus. China virus. Ugh, Meghan Markle. You know how they are. They're actresses. Coronavirus. This virus from China. China virus. Hong Kong. so sad there are no real British people left in this neighborhood. It's just foreigners. Ah, Hong Kong. Konnichiwa. Ni hao. Aw, oh, ma'am. I'm sorry I had to arrest a co-worker. It must be a rough day.